minor changes regarding concerns the DPW had and we got that list today we made all the revisions eight copies and those are new they're, they're minor and I can go over those uh, shortly My name is Peter Wells. I'm with the Berkshire Design Group. We've been working with the Montessori School with regard to changes and improvements to their campus uh, for the past year. Um, tonight, we would like the uh, Planning Board to consider amending a permit that was obtained back in the 90s with regard to their uh, addition then. Uh, we have other improvements that, that we, we want to make to the campus that will provide 
uh, a more pedestrian friendly campus uh, and uh, create some additional classroom space. For those of you that don't know the site, it's 1.6 acres, um, housing approximately an 8,000 square foot school. Uh, with that comes a parking area that houses 42 parking spaces uh, with a uh, what I would call an inadequate drop-off area for students. Uh, the parking lot itself is also uh, somewhat narrow in terms of um, regular size parking lots, so backing in and out is an issue and a concern uh, by both teachers and parents. Um, there's a generous playground in the rear of the site. This is the existing condition, uh, Industrial Drive, Bates Avenue. This is their park, existing parking area. Uh, there's two curb cuts. The uh, playground area is in back of the, of the site itself. Uh, it's screened and buffered generously to, to the north and the south and east. Uh, Coca-Cola is to the east. Uh, Montessori asked us to do a number of different things. Uh, the first was to create a, a safer vehicle and pedestrian environment, uh, mainly at the drop-off area and parking. They, they want us to look at housing a temporary classroom in a location that, that would not drastically affect the site plan, but one that uh, was in, in a location that was close proximity to the school itself easy access for children to go back and forth, and one that didn't uh, take up too much of the playground area, which is near and dear to the school. There's also some drainage issues uh, throughout the site that we are going to also address. Puddling in the rear where uh, kids and, and uh, teachers exit, and some small puddling area around the turnaround. And thirdly, they wanted us to really create a more inviting entrance area. Right now, it's overgrown with shrubs and an ornamental tree. It's not easy access straight into the uh, uh, entrance of the school itself. So, so they wanted us, us to create a more pedestrian-friendly and inviting uh, entrance plaza, if you will. This is a render site plan that we submitted. There have been a number of small changes that I will go over once I present uh, the plan itself. Um, start, starting with the existing drop-off area, we are removing it, removing one curb cut and a small drop-off area that occurs here. Uh, in its place, we're creating an entrance plaza, which will be concrete, uh, board in place concrete, benches, a nice planting area for a focal tree, which we've selected a, um, a tulip tree, Liriodendum tulipifera. Uh, quite a nice tree, not planted a lot, but a, a, a strong focal tree. Um, we have moved um, th two existing parking spaces that actually were non-conforming. They were on, they were within uh, eight feet of the property line. Um, ordinance says that you parking areas should be at least eight feet away from the property line. So we pushed those back into the parking lot uh, and created uh, buffer and green space. So if one were to come in now and basically park like that. Um, we've moved the accessible parking spaces. Right now they didn't even line up with the ramp that accesses the school. So we move them so the accessible spaces are directly at the base of the ramp. Um, we've created a, a better circulation pattern within the uh, existing parking area by basically moving the chain link fence that runs along the playground, in between the playground and parking, roughly 42 inches into the site. And what that allows is cars to, cars to uh, park and have an overhang of 42 inches, thereby the back 
portion of the car is not sticking out into the aisleway. Um, it's not adding more impervious surface, but it's creating a, a friendlier um, parking area in terms of turning around. It's not a large improvement, but it is an improvement and, and I think will be noted uh, by people that use the parking area often. <clears throat> um, we've, since we're taking away our drop-off area, which really can only house maybe a car and a half because it is so small, um, we've located a drop-off area along um, Bates Avenue. We've met with DPW with regard to uh, attempting to do this for their, their feedback. Uh, they had no issues with it as long as we complied with uh, city standards in terms of construction. So we have a 10 foot wide drop off area off of Bates that can house uh, seven cars versus the one and a half to two cars that exist there now. Um, coupled with that, we have a five foot wide concrete sidewalk uh, with benches for kids that are waiting to be picked up. Uh, and the sidewalk connects directly into the new entrance plaza and with easy access right to the front of the building. Um, adding this pavement, um, right now this site slopes um, somewhat, so we've added a small catch basin at the end of the loading area that will provide positive drainage and um, there won't be any puddling or icing. Uh, Ned Huntley from DPW uh, agreed with that in terms of creating a, a, a safer uh, drop-off area. Uh, we are proposing the concrete sidewalk to extend across the entranceway. Uh, that was a request from the planning department uh, rather than, than just go with painted lines. So th this will be a different material, concrete. Um, there, there will be um, rumble strips on each side, ta tactile warning strips. Uh, we've, we've added additional tactile warning strips um, in re response to planning departments um, concerns and also DPWs. So we have a curb cut here, a curb cut there, a tactile warning strip before the, the, the bike trail even. So it creates a really nice link from people that are biking um, both to the school but also onward. We, we've added a bike rack also located in this area. Um, and it, it, it really creates a, a really nice entranceway that is both easier for cars and for people to maneuver. Uh, the temporary classroom, and it will be temporary, um, is a uh, roughly 2,100 square foot uh, classroom that will house two, two classes. Uh, we have a, um, a precast concrete walkway that curves in to a system of steps and accessible ramp, uh, two doors for two different classrooms, two bathrooms inside, two exits in the rear. Um, and we located it there to be far enough away from the play area, close enough to the school so it's not a tremendous distance, far enough away from the existing sugar maple so that will be saved. Trees are really important in this space back here because kids are playing there often and rather than that, then have um, people made shade structures, uh, the trees are doing quite well and they're maintained well, they're, they're, they're checked on each year by arborists and they really, uh, they're near and dear to the school. Um, beside that, um, as I mentioned, the precast concrete pavers will be installed on sand, so they will be somewhat uh, pervious. Um, I've shown shots of the tulip tree that will be installed at a four inch caliber, which is about twice the size of, of the standard trees that are installed now. Detectable warning strips. Uh, we'll have signage throughout. The ex existing sign is going to be relocated and moved back slightly. Uh, there, there will be signage for parents in terms of directing them that this is just a drop-off area, not a parking area. Um, 
teachers will, will be out here during drop-off uh, times also. And times that it, it is somewhat um, busy in terms of vehicles is 45 minutes in the morning and 45 minutes in the afternoon. We haven't increased the amount of parking. We had the same amount of parking. I know the application that we submitted, there was an increase of one or two. We lost those by moving the parking area into the uh, site itself, com complying with current regulations. Um, there, there will be signage in terms of directional signage, but not much. This is a two-way entrance and exit. There'll be signage for the accessible spaces. And I'd like to also go over uh, the memorandum that we received uh, this afternoon and changes that we uh, had time to make and resubmit. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have copies of this or not, but I'll go through them. Um, general, the plan should be stamped by a Massachusetts registered professional engineer. I submitted a, a, a plan that was stamped by our, our PE, and we will be submitting stamp plans for building permits uh, later on. Uh, that they asked us to change the proposed drain pipe uh, from a HDPE, which is the plastic, to a RCP, which we've done on the plans. Uh, we've included a catch basin detail with a four-foot sump. Um, they were concerned about how uh, gentle this slope is along here. As long as uh, the gutter line flow is maintained, there, there will be proper drainage. So we put a note on our drawing to maintain gutter line flow to a new catch basin to get proper drainage on through here. Uh, the, the paving detail was altered slightly to increase an inch or so of or half an inch of, of uh, bituminous, and change the gravel base slightly. Um, snow removal from the um, pull-out area or drop-off area uh, will be maintenance that will be done by the school. Uh, maintenance and, and repair of the curbing along here uh, will also be done by the school. And that was a condition that was agreed upon back when I met with the DPW uh, months ago. Um, they, they wanted a curb ramp installed at this curb cut, at this on um, uh, walkway, crosswalk. So we installed that on our side um, as an, an addition. Um, tactile dome indicators shall be called out and installed in this area and a new curb cut in this area which we have included on our plans. And lastly, the DPW recommends that a pedestrian crossing sign meeting the current city standard be installed at the crosswalk across Bates. Um, the sign, the DPW will install the sign. They're asking for us to pay for it. So we have agreed to that. Those were the concerns the DPW had. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, planning department had some, um, some comments earlier that we've added to these plans. The plans have two revision dates, as you noted, on the plans. One was from re revisions that the planning department asked us to do, and the other was from the DPW today. Uh, the planning board asked us for the concrete um, crosswalk be installed, and we have done that. Uh, they asked us to move the parking area back, which we've complied to. And I don't recall what else was asked for, Wayne, but I know we, we answered them. Yeah, just the sidewalk a little bit to the north that you did as well. Oh, yes, adding a little bit of sidewalk to the north in hopes of having a linkage someday to the industrial park. I have a question with it. Was the, uh, com were the comments by the TPW, was the plan approved pending all these items being met, or is it rejected, resubmit with all these items being applied or addressed? They're just making recommendations. Okay. The, the only other thing they mentioned is um, they'd like to see final construction drawing before construction begins for work with the right of way. So they may set that to get a trench permit for work with the right of way. So they're going to have Questions from the board? 
what, how, well, how does the person that's driving in from the north uh, drop off here? Here? Yeah. Uh, they would they would have to either come in here and park and drop off, which most a lot of parents do. What, what entrance do they use for that? Right here. I this mean, they, uh, to, to walk in. Uh, this entrance. Okay. There's only one entrance in, in, in the morning that's open, and that's this entrance right here. So right now, many of the parents just come in and park and walk, walk their kids in. So a, a few of them use the small turnaround, but very few. Um, and parents that do park here, they're, they're not allowed to turn left coming out here, so, so they have to use the turnaround. And then go around it and use the um, roundabout. Well, it's not roundabout. The circular turn on in, in Industrial Drive. Um, this is the tulip tree on our list of first street trees, and is the street tree requirement triggered by this? A tulip tree doesn't withstand tremendous uh, urban environments. Um, in this area, which is not quite as, as bad, we have a, a, a planting area underneath it that's 10 feet wide, so it's going to have uh, quite a bit of room in order. Um, it does withstand moderate urban environments, uh, and we have used it uh, in parking areas before with uh, pretty good success. But we are willing to listen to concerns and make changes. Um, just, um, two things, I guess. One is, if you, and I don't know how much you participated in the conversation, but I, I'm having trouble as a parent who used to drop kids off at a school about the idea of the safety of moving the drop-off area from within your boundaries to adjacent to a public street. I mean, I understand there's a pull-off, but you're still putting kids and parents and cars on a public street versus inside a parking lot. So I, I'm not understanding the safety decision there. Well, we feel, one, this is an unsafe condition because there isn't room enough, and when you do drop, drop, drop your, your, your kid off and want to walk with them, you have to leave your car. There's a number of issues with problem with this. Some, some parents actually do turn left, some don't. Uh, it's just too small and inadequate for that with, with, with the amount that the school has grown. Uh, this we felt there wasn't a lot of area to put one either. We couldn't push back in this direction. Uh, we did obtain a order, not in order conditions, but a request for determination negative for the isolated wetland here. Uh, we are not allowed to increase impervious area within the buffer zone. So we're limited with that. Uh, and this was the only area that we felt uh, had room enough in order to um, at least create a an environment that was safer than this. I know it's on a, a busy street, uh, but by pulling off and, and having staff waiting there, um, we felt it, it was the, the only other option. And, you know, and the second thing would be this temporary structure seems to have a fairly permanent sidewalk to it. So how temporary is it? Uh, that's that's a good point. Uh, the sidewalk itself was slated to be poured in place concrete, but we opted to go with pavers that are set set on, on sand that can, can be picked up and moved uh, and will be once this is gone. Uh, it'll be reused for, for other uh, sidewalk areas. Um, I'm not here really to speak on the future plans of the school itself, but this is a rented uh, structure uh, for, for, for five years. And by that time, the school is already planning on, on, on other uh, future plans for either additional buildings or new sites or what have you. And how many people do they estimate use, would use the drop-off area every morning and afternoon? Do they have an estimate on just how many do <coughs> Uh, we don't know yet because some people will still opt to, 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 to just park. Um, it can house seven cars. Um, I, it's hard to guess how many might, might be using it. 
Um, so TULIP is not on the list of sections. I'm sorry? TULIP is not on the list of sections. Okay, I, I, mean, I don't particularly care if it's really going to require it, but you don't know this. You don't know why it's used to accept it if, you know, you have missed you in TULIP. Okay. You can what? what? You could accept it if you want, but you usually require the three and three. Wayne, can I ask the question? Is uh, Suicon accepted? Um, last Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Even though this is a, a plaza tree, it's not really a street tree. Well, the other question for any race, do you have enough trees to meet the, in that area, is it every 30 or 40 feet? Right. So, what's the frontage? 272 feet. So, theoretically, you'd need nine trees to meet the. No, the frontage is the frontage. Do you have to say that? Frontage plus 300. Frontage, 292.46 feet. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, you'll need almost 10 fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it's similar to the conversation we just had with the, the, the hotel on Gone Street where right. we made them move back and put in more trees because it's no good deeds go to the <laughs> No, we, we have pre ex existing trees along Bates Avenue that are, that are quite large that we're saving. Uh, now, this is a um, a pin oak. Um, this is a cavalry pear. These are two two large oaks. Um, we're putting in this tree. There's a bunch at the corner here. Um, I guess I, I didn't see room. Well, okay, I thought that was a bush with the bloom next to the next. No, one, but, uh, this is a tree. I would say there, there's nothing large in there like this, but there's probably seven or eight that are, you know, three or four or five inch caliber. It's just a, it's woods. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, we could wave it. If, if they would replace the tulip with an approved tree, we could, I mean, this, we could always wave the street tree requirement if we feel it's the site doesn't require it. Right. I guess yeah. I, would, I, would, I would urge you to drive by also, and, and there's, there's quite a nice canopy from both sides. At this one section. Yeah. I mean, they're like 60 feet apart. Right, we, and you know, we do, a, you don't have, they don't have to be every 30 feet. You've right. got a clump of four, right. 120 feet, and another clump of four. Kind of like, you know, we do the Taco Bell. Yeah, they clump it. 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 If, they, if we wanted to make a condition that they replace the tulips with a tree from the approved list and waive the remaining, the quantity. Right. Um, I want to talk some more about the traffic pattern. Sure. Um, so you're, you're being very clear that you're going from one curb cut to two, but what you're getting for that curb cut is 120 feet of pull off. So my 14-foot curb cut turned into, you know, I don't remember your number, but it's scaled at something like 120 feet. Yes. And uh, it's 10 feet wide. 10 feet wide. And so you're right next to the wetlands, and you're saying that that's not an impervious problem, that's not a drainage problem that you're adding to, because you have drainage problems on the property. No, no. Uh we're not ne next to the wetlands. This is 200 feet away from the wetlands. Everything drains in that direction. 
the one drainage area we have is out, out of this walkway. This pup huddles up, so it becomes mud, right. and, and kids, you know, get muddy. So, so we're we're correcting that and add, adding a uh, walkway. There's a small puddle <laughs> that's in in the turnaround area that won't, won't be there anymore. So, but, cars coming from your side of the property where you are uh, will pull off and let the kids out on the school side. Yes. And then you've got transfer truck traffic in within. Um, at the edge of the next lot. Yeah, that's that. That's roughly 120 feet down. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they do come down Bates Avenue. I mean, we, oh yeah, we, we have trouble with them doing what we don't want them to do. We we have problems with that now because some parents they, you can also park across the street. They they have access to the parking area across the street. Um, and many of the teachers park there, but some of the parents also park there and walk across Bates right. in the morning, and, and, and we're hoping to alleviate some of that. I'm sorry, I don't know how many students are at the school. Is it, a, can you give me some? 115. 115? Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that puts the 44 places in scale, so that's mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm doubtful parents are going to pull into the parking lot and turn around if they're coming from the other direction. But no. Can. And it's better than, I mean, I, I can I can see that you have more room in the parking lot than you did. I, I think parents that are coming from this direction won't turn around and drop off here. They're going to come in here and park and, and just drop off. Um, there, there wouldn't be sense to do that because there is quite a bit of parking. It's well above what's, what's needed. Um, but it's that 45 minutes in the morning and afternoon that, that it does get, which is what most schools run, run into. You yeah. don't want to build a parking area for about that 45 minutes. I understand. I mean, I just, I think people are in a hurry and they're not going to want to get trapped in that parking lot, so they're going to turn around and right there and try to go back so that they don't get stuck behind other people coming in to let kids off too, is my worry. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. <coughs> um, I'm, I'm Celia Pastoriza. I'm on the board at the school. Um, and I've been part of this with Peter all along. Um, the school is preschool through sixth grade, but the bulk of the students are in the younger ages. So actually, most of the parents do park and go in and help their kids get settled. That's probably, and this is off the top of my head, that's probably 60 to 70 of the students are in that younger age group where the parents would definitely be going in. Okay. Um, That's so helpful. it's the older kids that would be dropping off, of which there's right now um, probably 40 altogether. That would be first grade through sixth grade. And even then, a lot of the first grade, second grade parents do like to go in and walk into the school it's just as they get older, um, that they're more likely to be in a rush. <laughs> do, you have, do you have children who travel by bike? I, I don't think there's any bike racks in the story that I saw, are there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, thank you. Look at it right here. Mm -hmm. Don't people right now, our office is on North Street, so I, when I forget what time of day it is, and I mistakenly drive by the school, uh, at drop off or pick up, and, and people are parked on the lawn in front of the school now where the drop off is proposed. Yes. Two, two wheels on the road, two wheels off. And so I think. What is being proposed, it's not ideal, but the, the site is not ideal, but it's better certainly than what exists now. Okay. And this will eliminate that. Right, right. And so it'll be a safer condition. Yeah. Is there, I don't know if you look at, I can't think of any of the public elementary schools. <coughs> I think of the one that's close to me, just leads. There is a, a tree lawn in between the drop-off lane and the and the road, and I think that's typical. And this doesn't have that. I mean, again, this is directly on a public street without any barrier. Right. At we, all. we did discuss that, and there were two um, constraints that we had with with that idea. Um, one is by pu pulling us in a, another ten feet, we would lose um, this tree for sure and we might lose this tree. Um, not that that's the major issue, but also pulling it, putting an island here 
to create a buffer runs the problem of since it is such a small uh, drop-off area, only seven cars. If you get someone that pulls in and their 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 child is having a difficult time or, or they can't get them out, no one else can drive in there. So there's no way to go around um, that car. So it was more of that type of logistics that we were concerned about. And 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 like Mark said, if you go there in the morning, uh, people are parked everywhere unloading out. Not that that's safe and correct, but this yeah. is a much safer... No, you know, we don't want to be rewarding bad behavior. We've addressed most of them. There's some similar conditions um, that are going to be a letter and over an hour later. But no, no outstanding concerns from the planning? No. I think Brandy mentioned it. Or what makes the temporary shelter? I mean, it, it's got plumbing, it's got power, we do that for five years. Are there any special you, considerations for temporary? There's no reason they couldn't keep it forever. I think it's temporary in the sense that it's no longer a classroom space when it's replacing. But we're not suggesting any conditions. So. Right, I mean, essentially we should consider it to be a structure. Right. Yeah. If this was a permanent structure, would, would the discussion right now be different as far as setbacks or anything? Yeah. Then, right. Because it's got this temporary tag. Right, it's not going to get special really, yeah. our, our main focus for everything you said and you gave me said is really right along the road. And what's back there to some extent doesn't matter that much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions by the board? No? No? Public comment? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is anyone here from the public who would like to speak on this issue? No? Do we have any more questions? Do you want to just, before we do, you want to, we had the condition about change the tree and well, we discuss it. That. We really right. Yeah. And while we're still open, we should decide yeah. what we're going to do with that. So, I mean, we've still got nine or ten issues by the DPW, all of which have been met. So, uh, I don't know if that would be a condition. Because the comments from the DPW just received this afternoon, and then you had a quick turnaround and, and addressed them. Mm -hmm. But the DPW has hasn't seen this. No, no, okay. so, so we go. But those are just comments by the DP, or recommendations to begin with. Right. right. So, so most of those are changed. I'm going to go through the four yeah. that, that I have. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about. So first three are from DPW directly. Just that they get final construction drawings prior to construction, primarily with what's going to happen in the right of way. Um, that uh, the owner will provide uh, pedestrian crossing signs to DPW that meet city standards. And to all them just their crosswalk. Um, the owner of the pool is responsible for snow removal within this pull-off area and for maintaining a curb within the pull-off area. Um, and that the two, so you guys, that the tulip tree replaced by one of the trees for the subdivision. That's exactly the subdivision regulations. So that's exactly the tree. Okay. And that would give us a total of one, two, three, four. Well, the problem is how many are there within that wrap in the cluster? Right, plus whatever we're getting I'm, I'm fine with the tree condition, but I would just weigh in as an opinion that if they picked a specimen tree, they they thought about whether it's going to do well in that location. They've got they they're trying to influence the you know front entry of their building. So I'm I'm not I, mean, I don't have a good reason not to you know to oppose the tree list that we've developed. But I just think this is to me almost a specimen tree rather than one of the border trees we usually talking about. I don't feel about this one where I do about a juniper or something. Right. But that's just an opinion. And obviously our trees, we're particularly interested in our trees on the streets that we're going to own. This is a different conversation than we have with the hotel. Yeah, yeah, it is. Where there's a pedestrian walkway all the way down the street. This is at the border of the industrial park. Does, does the absence of enough street trees bother anybody? No, I don't think it, it reads that way when you when you drive by. Those are big trees. Yeah, but they're, they're mature and they're it's you don't it doesn't read as a lot of empty space. It's not so, a new development. No. Right. No. Right. And I don't think the surrounding um, surrounding properties necessarily have anywhere near enough trees. Right. Right. <laughs> so 
I would have no objection to having them put up there. What is it? Um, Maria Dendron to look at her. Pardon? Maria Dendron to look at her. That's it. That's it. Yeah, if you can spell it, then. <laughs> I don't. I, I have to say I don't like the pull-off area of being on the street like that. But um, I'm not sure what else they could do. Have you seen? I mean, have you driven by a drop-off that's otherwise <coughs> crazy. crazy and it's really unsightly? There's just cars every, like parked every which way. Well, would it <coughs> would it solve that problem, or is there going to be are there going to be cars backed up on Eighth uh, Street all the way to uh, Rich Street? I, I think it and really, all that fossil fuel. Huh? <laughs> I think I, I said I, I've driven by and I see cars up with two wheels on the lawn, two wheels off. I see all four uh, wheels up and parked, scattered any which way they can get. I think with with the, the pull off, it will be you know, predetermined. This is where you're going to go, and you're not going to go anywhere else. And it'll be <coughs> it'll be sustained chaos instead of just it's it's crazy when you drive by and then, and they're everywhere. But when um, you have Say someone parks in the middle and leaves their car there for whatever reason, an extended period of time. I mean, you're still. I mean, it's going to be like pulling out of parallel parking or something. Well, they put away everything. I mean, it, you know, are you really going to have those? I mean, it, it, again, it, it's going to be like a parking lane on the street to me. I, and I, it, it is, but yeah. I think if uh, I forget the name of the day here, school across from the Y on Prospect. Mm -hmm. Metal it's, Arc. Metal Arc. It's the same. There's no pull off, there's nothing. Why parking by itself is, is horrible. Right. And a lot of people park across the street. And then in Metal Arc, 45 minutes you know, early and late afternoon, same thing. And so there's, there's no pull off. It's, it's dangerous. Can there be, I mean, I'm not sure if we can, we can't map for the sign that says no parking. It's just, what do they have an airport? Drop off only. Yeah. Drop off only. Right. We, we have sign, signage down here, pick up and drop off only. Uh, there will be teachers there, as I mentioned, bringing kids in. Parents are not supposed to stop and get out and walk their kids in in this area. Uh, so they're going to try and enforce that, um, and so their cars are not parked there, and, and they are moving. So that attempt is going to be made, and, and the learning process will, will occur with this drop-off. But, but I thought it was said that the majority of kids are of an age where their parents will want to park and drop them in. Yeah, and, and that's for this area. Right, so drop off on the older kids. The younger kids, they won't park there. They'll go into the parking lot. Do we have any plans that go about those signs? No, it's in my plans. About the signs? Plans and no, no, no. We don't have. Oh, oh uh, no for the drop-off sign? No. Uh, we don't have that yet, but you can make that a condition. Okay. We're obviously going to try and um, wayfind as, as best possible to, so there aren't any questions. So we have um, one, two, three, four, five potential conditions. So all the recommendations from the DPW have been met. Uh, staff recommends final drawings before. Um, what were the conditions before? So final construction drawings. Before, final, before any work within the road right away. Before any work, okay. Uh, pedestrian crossing signs, snow removal within the turn, within the cutout. The tulip tree, we're going to waive that condition. And drop off sign. <coughs> So the snow removal, snow removal is also curbing right there. So. Any further discussion? I move we approve site plan to create building, extended curb cut, and drop off to the Montessori School of Northampton, 51 Bay Street, Northampton, Map ID. 
Next up, uh, slated for 7.30 tonight is a major site plan for a 4,780 square foot medical office addition at 70 Main Street in Florence, map ID 23A-70. Okay. Hey, my name is Matt McDonough and I'm a uh, manager of Middle Hampshire Development Group, which owns the property at 70 Main Street as well as a couple of abutting properties. Uh, and our tenant is the Valley Medical Group. The building uh, is 13,000, existing building is 13,373 square feet. Um, it is built in 1881, and the, this addition is really just to uh, expand the uses that have been crammed, for want of a better word, into this building. And also we're using the opportunity both to comply with the new building codes and, uh, and just the, the changing uh, the method of delivery of services by our tenant to upgrade the building. The upgrades will include uh, uh, new electrical service, uh, larger gas service, and uh, uh, fire fire protection sprinkler system, as well as uh, uh, pull boxes, strobes, and you know hardwire smoke alarms. Um, the addition is uh, contemplated at 4,780 4, feet, which will bring a total. Uh, New, a total building of 18,153 feet. This proposal uh, does not contemplate, because we added parking about six years ago, this proposal does not contemplate uh, a number of the typical uh, accoutrement to a development this size, in that we are not changing curb cut, we're not changing uh, the parking, we're not changing the landscaping. We're really taking a, uh, a, a small uh, existing parking area and a small lawn that had been, uh, they've had a trailer on for about six years. And um, and that's where the addition is going. Um, I don't have a tripod, so I apologize. But this is the existing building, and the addition it really just extends back here via sympathetic uh, uh, construction materials, brick, and and uh, precast concrete panels, and it will, it will very much look <coughs> like uh, the existing building. I can pass this around. Um, the, uh, let me set the here. Yeah. Yeah, for this. Um, here is the, the site for Main Street. Here's the existing building. Here's the concrete addition. This is parking that we, we constructed about six years ago. This is staff parking, which really dramatically frees up uh, the parking for uh, clients. Uh, we also own these two parcels, but we're not using those parcels as part of this presentation because they're not needed at this time. The packets that we had given to the uh, department and, and to this uh, board uh, speaks to the parking that we have existing uh, 103 spaces and required is only 92. So we're losing, uh, that does not include the ones, we're losing about six spaces back here. Um, this is the uh, existing now. There's a small parking area here, and that trailer is there. That goes away. The parking area goes away, and the addition fits right here. Um, we have a photometric plan that uh, planning staff had uh, noticed, thankfully, 
we did that uh, the uh, photometric plan did not address. Uh, we had three wall packs, and we only dealt with two of them. Uh, this revised plan, which I have multiple copies of for the board, um, uh, has been amended, so that it shows that there's the light doesn't bleed off our real estate. Just as a note, and for those of you who've been out there, this is the fire station. And, and while we have lighting in this lot and existing lighting here, uh, and our lighting doesn't uh, go on to our neighbor's property, there's an enormous amount of light shed from, I mean, it's, it's great. We, they're great neighbors. But so, so while we, you know, we, ours is going to zero at the border, there's a lot of incoming, so, <laughs> which is okay. Uh, again, they're, uh, they're great neighbors, and who'd you rather have if you've had a problem next door to you? Um, this is the, uh, the actual addition. Here's uh, Main Street. Here's the entrance. None of that changes. The driving patterns in this site don't change whatsoever, because uh, back here was his parking, and that remains so. And the addition, the side dot setbacks are the same as exist, and uh, none of that changes. So while this is a major project by whatever definition it is, uh, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't demand a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the issues that a, a, a major project elsewhere in the town would have to be addressed doesn't, uh, it's not indicated because we, we did the parking six years ago. To handle that. This is my third project before this committee in the last 15 years, and I think the other two have been really good. And I think that uh, we expect this one to go as smooth as the other two. The first being the redevelopment of uh, 1999. We re redeveloped the building laundry property into the medical office space at 118 Con Street, and. Uh, that, but that project went well, and that was a lot more complicated than this uh, is anticipated to be. And also, I have a principal in a, in a company that uh, is redeveloping the Pro Brush complex at 296 Nine Street, and that also has gone really well. And I think uh, the departments with, with which we interact, mostly the building department, are very pleased with that development. So I think I have a pretty good track record with this. And, Crocker Building Company, who will be our builder uh, on this project, um, has done a lot of medical space for us, and we have a great level of confidence in them. They've done a fair amount of work in Northampton as well. Questions? Yes, Review the parking numbers for me. I got, uh, you have 92. No, we have. 103. Correct. That's what you have, and it goes down to 92. No, no. Required is 92. It would be losing the six that we're going to lose, we still have 103. I didn't count those. That helps my math. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm okay with the project. Parking is my only concern about this, and it's not really for this particular building, but it is because I have sat through meeting after meeting after meeting about Middle Street and the parking problems created by another building. So, I'm aware of that, and I, and you know, when we had the opportunity uh, seven years ago to purchase the 77 and 81 Maple Street, uh, we held our nose and we did it because it's very expensive. But it was really probably we were renting space from uh, Miss Warren Steiner, and you know, uh, but it, it was clear that uh, long term we had to solve that problem. We were very thankful we did, and I think it's just the proof of the pudding. This is a major site plan because of the parking requirements, but they already meet the parking requirements because of what they did several years ago. So, I'm not sure I understood your question and your answer. Have the parking issues on this street been addressed, or they're, they're still ongoing? It, it's not really this no, it's building's problem, oh, but the, I'm sensitized to the, the, the effect of. Um, what you don't want is you don't want a, a facility to take it to encourage its staff to park in the neighborhood because they don't have enough parking and then to free up your parking capability for your clients. And I use this building, I, that, that's not been my experience. Ever. But I just, that's my only, that's the only thing I've learned is, is about parking. That 
you know, you just, uh, it's, it's certainly been an issue in Florence. This, you know, you can see Middle Street on the, on the plans here, but it's not, and, and that's the street that has been most upset about the on-street parking. But I don't believe it's come from this building. Because there's usually space in this building. Mm -hmm. right. yes. and, I think, and I think it goes to what you said. I didn't know the history of it, but I think it's yes. from biting the bullet some time ago. Yes, and, and, the, and the lot on uh, at 77 uh, Maple Street is staff parking. It's a like car key access, and uh, that really has freed up the noise. Uh, all the pressure is really gone. Mm -hmm. And any time of day and night, I mean, really following it more closely as this project evolved, there's always uh, ample parking. So much so that Florence Pizza gets some freebies at lunch. <laughs> People that hit the wrong driveway. But uh, so uh, we're, we're comfortable with that aspect of it. And we're excited about the project because uh, it, you know, the building is uh, tired. And it needs, uh, needs a substantial shot in the arm, which this project will uh, accomplish. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so similar to the conversation we just had with Montessori. Uh, 192 feet of frontage, and I don't see any trees. <laughs> I'm not sure what the plantings are. They show one, two, three, four small shrubs. Well, let me explain the plantings, uh, the existing plantings. Uh, okay. Well, we purchased the building in 19, in, uh, 19, uh, nine, uh, 2001, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but the front of the building had this hill from the face of the building right to the sidewalk had all this ivy and it was really junky and people had full of coffee cups and whatever. And we removed it because it was buggy and it was, it was a water problem in the building. And we found out that it was, it was loaded, it was this tall, it was loaded with construction debris from 1981. So we took out 300 yards of stuff and planted grass and has planted. So the whole front of the building since uh, uh, 2002 has had a, a nice belt of planters along uh, Main Street, and then there's a, a, a probably 20 foot belt of grass from the sidewalk and, and it inwards. And there's trees all around. And uh, there's a, I think that the on this plan that you have, it gives a calculation on the on the green space as well. And I believe it's uh, in excess of the requirement. It's not so much a, a green space issue or a plantings issue or the fact that it is much improved than it was early 2000s, but Very much so, yeah. because of the site plan, it triggers the necessity or could trigger the necessity of a certain quantity of trees along the street. So. Right, so in general business, there's um, there's three types of trees. There's the at the, set, at the property line, there's no street tree requirement, but otherwise there would be one per third. I, I, I didn't catch that. So if you, at this, at this point, it would be appropriate, you know, if it makes sense, to enhance the tree count. Um, there are four now along the street. Okay. Um, two on either side of the driveway, by my reading. And if, if uh, trees or shrubs? No, those are trees. They're in the tree belt. So we don't have that down there. Uh, yeah, we have the shrubs. This is a, this is a drawing. Uh, yeah. The second page. It just doesn't make any sense. Right. No, it does not. So it looks like they're going to do six. Our frontage is. Uh, mm -hmm. Two thirty. Mm -hmm. well, it's more than that. Plus sixty-four. Uh, cool. Are you just you can add more trees? Yeah. No, no, you're, no <laughs> we're, we're happy to do that. I mean, those trees are are actually the town's trees. They're in the tree belt. Are they not? Uh, they could be, but it, it, that, uh, either they could be in the requirement is along the street. I see. So it could be in the belt or it could be on your property. Two hundred fifty-seven Okay, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but there's four on the cur on the street line, there's two in, at, at like a, equal to the face of the building, then there's a tree uh, 
in the grassy area to, towards the entrance. And there's the trees throughout the front lot. The one at the entrance and in the parking lot wouldn't count, but okay, so, so by so. that total frontage, it would be eight trees. Okay. There's four there, then. Right, so when we continue the trees, I'm going to use tree belt on the street line where the others are. You could, or you could cluster them as well, or stagger them. Yeah. I'm big on not putting trees near our roofs, so I'd rather move them away as best I can. With sight lines coming in and out of the properties, there may be some advantages to not space them all out. Right. Which isn't a problem, it's just the quantity. Right. right. Right, we could probably shade the trees, no pun intended, over towards the uh, the west side so it wouldn't impede the sight lines. And over over this way a little bit. I still think you had a good shot then. Yeah, because there's no it's not as if we're gonna block an entrance, because the entrance is in the parking lot. So Yeah, the, the entrance road kind of divides the building up. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So would make the condition four street trees from the approved planting plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go down swing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that was one uh, condition that was discussed. The other was the revised light plan that you have, which addresses the third yes. wall tax. Yes, and I have, uh, I have lots of copies. Station, uh, I, I encourage you to, they throw a lot of light. They have spotlights. Their spotlights are spotlights. It's like point two, total point three. Right. Point one. So that's a, that wall pack is for safety? The one on the... Uh, third one that was, yeah. That yeah, was, because what happens is there's a light on the building now that will be uh, removed because of the addition. And there's a little sidewalk from the existing building over to the uh, staff parking. parking. Mm -hmm. So really that's just kind of... that's a, if, so if, a if, if this was not the fire department, this would be a dark corner. Right. That's pretty well lit. Is that on a photo cell or a time box? Or a uh, they're usually on, on a clock, on a... Oh, so they're not, it won't be on 24 hours a day. I mean, no, be... and as I said, if you go over here, it's, it's pretty bright. Right. <laughs> Just generally. Right. Uh, but I think it's more for the same But for the sake of argument, if, it, if the fire station didn't exist, those yeah. three wall parks are on a, on a timer, so at yes. 10 o'clock at night, whatever right. the time is, they all go off. Correct. Okay. Right. Their hours generally don't exceed 8 p.m., mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be much longer. Other comments? I'll open up for public. Yes, uh, if you, Strauss, so you guys, if you want to, uh, ma'am, step up and just give your name and address. My name is Sherline. The Alpha. Sure. Yeah, Fisher. Gertrude. Number 253 Middle Street, which are about. Valley Medical, and then across the projected parking lot, where it was all marked off where um, John's linoleum, and then the, 
little building next to it was torn down. So our concern is exactly what the setbacks are going to be from the property line, because there's nothing there now but barren, vacant lot. I think I called to, I don't know if this concerns this meeting or not. We're not proposing anything on that site. Yeah. So yeah. Not gonna do anything. Yeah. Well, that's this, why I want to Yeah, that's why I wanted to this, this proposed addition for tonight's hearing doesn't affect those parcels that you're talking about. Okay. So um, but could you tell me though how much uh, how many feet are in concern? Because I talked to Mr. McDonald <coughs> before about you know planting some things in the future. It's a, it's a 50 foot addition, 50 foot addition. Well, we're going 50 yeah. foot that way, yes. Yeah, right. So. And it abuts exactly to. Uh, no, I think there's, my, uh, there's an issue of confusion here. The, the parcel that that she is describing is this parcel. We're not proposing anything in this parcel. Mm -hmm. Right. That's there's, so. There's nothing has nothing right. happened there. Right. So it's just so, going to stay vacant. For now. For now. For, right. Again, but anything hearing, we do there, we'd have to go back to the board. Right. Tonight's hearing is just on the addition in the back, which doesn't affect that parcel in any way. And they couldn't do that without the back. So just for my information, though, I would like to know uh, if the parking lot is adjoining um, residential property. How many feet is there for a setback? Is there a special guideline? I'm sure I follow the. The existing parking lot isn't changing physically, but the parameters of the parking lot are changing. Right. I think the question is, what is the zoning guideline for, in general? In if general. 63 and a half, if 63 and a half Maple Street would be redeveloped, and that's not the topic of tonight's conversation. I understand. That's the question. There's yeah. a, there, typically between, uh, or the zoning requires that between uh, <coughs> a commercial district and a residential district that there's a 30 foot. Right. Um, planted buffer and that the planning board can reduce to planting. Um, so in in this case, the, um, the or and, and if there's a, they can do that if there's a fence there. There's currently a fence and right. landscaping as the buffer between this parcel under <coughs> which is under review in front of you now and the abutting parcel. Um, but the same buffer requirement would apply to um, any use on that other parcel that's not part of this permit review tonight. Okay, that, that was my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else would like to speak on this issue? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. My name is Josh Rick, and I'm here for the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on behalf of Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. Just making sure we're using the same entrance and exit for our paratransit vehicles? Yes, in fact, uh, uh, four or five years ago, we actually gave written permission to Pioneer Valley uh, Transit Authority to put their bus shelter on our property, and that, nothing would change. Nothing's going to change on that. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. The last for us, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I move that we approve the major site plan, 4,780 square foot medical office addition at 70 Main Street, Florence, map ID 23A-70, with the uh, listed conditions. Okay, and the conditions were? The conditions were the addition, four additional trees, and the wall paths, the three lights on the exterior of the building are off at uh, 9 o'clock. Okay, next up, scheduled for 7.30, uh, a little late, a continuation of a public hearing on proposed zoning changes to URA, B, and C districts, and the modifications to section 6.8. Do you want to walk us through? Um, yeah, so the, the public hearing, um, May 13th, there was... Um, you know, a lot of discussion about the bulk of the zoning package, and the reason why it was continued was uh, because at a previous um, city council subcommittee meeting, um, economic development, housing, and land use, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels had proposed um, a modification to urban residential C to um, include a special permit provision for uh, any new construction of, of a project that included seven or more either multifamily units or townhouse units. And because that was a standard that is not currently in the regulations for urban residential C and certainly wasn't advertised, we needed to advertise that because it's a more stringent standard than the, um, than the existing situation. And um, uh, so that's the, why the that public hearing was continued, and the, the um, ordinance committee continued theirs as well, but their meeting was June 10th. So um, instead of closing on a certain portion of the package, um, it made sense to sort of carry everything forward and let this one proposed amendment that had to be advertised catch up, in essence, so that you all could review the whole thing again and make your final recommendation to city council. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion about whether um, you know, there were, actually at that um, meeting as well, there were sort of a couple of pockets of um, residents from mostly two neighborhoods that were raising concerns about um, about the zoning and whether or not um, their neighborhood should be taken out of urban residential C. And so this amendment is sort of um, almost a compromise to say, okay, there was this concern that uh, when multiple units are um, proposed, that's when neighborhoods get concerned about wholesale changes within the, of the block or the neighborhood. Um, so this is a mechanism to um, help address that. And so it certainly would be a staff recommendation that makes sense, as opposed to looking at remapping, you know, different areas of urban residential C in particular. Staff looked at the recommendation from um, count, the counselor and um, thought that it would be prudent to also add that special permit criteria for urban residential B as well because um, their townhouse units are allowed in B, so it sort of makes sense to mirror that in B. So in front of you is, and what was advertised, is a minor modification to both um, B and C to. Um, include a special permit um, provision for that. So that's sort of where we are. Um, there were a couple of, um, we also got one of the zoning revisions committee members had um, quickly um, reviewed this and made a couple of um, comments that I think are valid to, to modify just for clarification, adding, um, clarifying that the lot dimension standards are the minimum dimension standards required as sort of at the header and then also clarifying um, this issue of um, how we allow 
um, setbacks for garages that are closer to side property boundaries than um, residential structures, which is the current standard now. We allow if you, could, you can bring your garage, if it's attached to the house, that component of the house can be closer to a side property line than 15 feet if it's only used for garage, storage, or workshop space. And um, it wasn't, I guess, um, um, it wasn't, it, if we felt that it wasn't um, clear that, that parking cars and storage are treated equally, so I think adding just the word um, that um, that provision for a 10 foot side setback um, is, is for the purposes of storing vehicles and other items or workshops. What well, if we also said it was not for the use of wood? Yeah, that, that's true. So that's another way to look at it. Yep. Can I ask for the clarification on what the rule currently is for a detached garage? It can be four feet from the property line at the side and the rear. It still needs to be. Um, uh, 15 feet from the front lot line. And with regard to what Brandy just said, can it be rented if it's no. somebody living? No. And that's the distinction that's currently on the books. You can't, so you're allowed, if it's just, you know, a storage or workshop space and it's detached, it can be much closer to the property boundary. For living space, it's always been the standard that it meets the same setback as the principal structure. However, there was this, um, at some point added this modification and maybe you could get a little bit closer if you sign an affidavit that will only be used for storage and you'll never convert it to living space. Okay. but at the same time understanding that there are many, many five-unit um, and six-unit um, properties in the urban residential C district. And so um, he felt like it needed to be more than five or six and um, that he was comfortable with seven and sort of, um, It was a balance. Uh, he just said it was a balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. well, my concern about the premium only premium then is about his amendment is that it, it seems to be sold as a way to block any further development. But a special permit can easily be granted and it might put us in the political arena. We would approach it from a finance standpoint. And the neighbors might think that this is some way to block uh, larger funds and townhouses, but I don't think it's going to work for that. Hopefully they're listening. Pardon? Hopefully they're listening. It, make, it raise, does raise the bar. It's, it a, right. it, it's a higher bar to clear than a special yeah. than a site plan. But there's hardly any guarantee that the planning board would not approve it. That's true. No. But we also have a lot more discretion when we do approve it. He actually argued he was pretty comfortable with the way it was. He was simply trying to make the right. situation more comfortable. Right. And but I think you're right. It's not only is it, um, it, it's, it's, it has a couple of, um, I, I think, more protective measures than, mm -hmm. than it otherwise would without the special permit. And that is, when people see special permit, sometimes they're afraid to even apply because they know that those can be appealed and that it would, in the very least, delay a project. Um, and so it might turn people away that we might not even see come forward because they see, well, seven is and the other thing, of course, is it does take a two-thirds vote of the board, um, so it's not just a simple majority. So um, that's part of the, the concern, certainly from an applicant standpoint, that they need to um, get more votes. I'm sure I also put about the appeal. The appeal process is, is much easier to appeal a special permit on the site plan. No, I don't. No, it's much easier if you can appeal a special permit, site plan, 
Right. Right. They're, they're almost impossible to seal. Technical. Right. Right. So, right. And what my the appeal then would change because this is on the reform law for the legislature as it has been every year for decades. So I don't really know it's going to change, but it seems like there's a greater chance passing this year than before, and that would change the vote from the super majority to the majority. On the special vote, the panel with city council, the city council has to accept that. Yeah. Okay. And I guess maybe going back to Brandy's comment, and it seems that we've worked, and especially all of you more than I have, but I mean, we've all worked very hard to get this package, and it seems like it's taking it and trying to address the needs of a very specific group of constituents versus, you know, the idea of trying to do this across the entire city. And, and I guess, I just worry, are, you, are we creating a, a point or a, a fissure or whatever, I mean, that this could Begin, you know, be the beginning of finding wedges between and start, you know, are we defeating our own purpose in some sense by, before we've even in, implemented it, we've said, oh, and then here's a, you know, we're, we're going to alter it, you know, in this way that creates a special class or a special place right. because of constituent, I mean, so I, I don't know, it just, like you said, I mean, do we want people not to apply because they're scared off by the, I mean, no, I'd rather have them apply and then tell them, well, I'm sorry, you don't mean to, or whatever, but I mean, I, I, I don't know, I worry about discouraging people, but, and we never we never know what we've missed, because right. they never come to us. Right. And, and I mean, I guess there is that, there is that piece, I think the other piece is um, the nature of um, trying to make changes to zoning is it gets massaged as it, as it works its way through, and this is, these represent um, significant changes Beyond what has been changed for many years, and in you know the spirit of sustainable Northampton, but um, the other piece is we can try. We try many times to do things incrementally. So if this is the first step, and we can we'll work on it, live with it, and see what happens and what percolates and what doesn't, and you know maybe come back and address it later. But from our from staff perspective, I think. Um, Trying to work out those compromises as it as it goes through makes sense, um, so that we can get to a place where our zoning really matches better what's in the neighborhood, um, as opposed to having it all fail just on a, you know. You don't want to lose it for just a small right. Yeah. Right. Well, like in, in two years we've had, it's been um, there hasn't been a lot of pushback. There's been a lot of um, education on, on just what it is that's being proposed and why it's being and what it represents really truly on the street and what it means to a particular neighborhood. And once that understanding uh, came across, again, there wasn't a lot of pushback. And not that this was pushback, but this is one issue that came up. And I think in a good faith effort to get this whole thing moving forward, that I don't think it's unreasonable to address it. Well, and also there was, you know, five years ago, when we were having public meetings about this, at the beginning of our meeting, we, we explained the process, and that the ZRC and the planning board don't enact zoning. We recommend zoning, right. but eventually, all zoning changes are a political decision, right. and it's the city council's responsibility for enacting them. So, for a city councilor, this is part of their process that they're going to go through. That hopefully, they will make it so they can sign off on something. It's really taken five years just to get to where we are. <laughs> okay, Monaco. You had a lot of water. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I suppose it's kind of like the 11th inning, but a couple of people in the neighborhood. I live at 43 Eastern Ave in Northampton. Um, I just retired as a deputy fire chief, but a few people in the neighborhood of Eastern Avenue have asked me to just talk real quickly about um, uh, how I feel about the... Um, uh, the, uh, the building on compromised infrastructure and what I'll do for a few minutes is or a minute I'll back up a little bit fall of 2009 I was tasked with doing a fire threat assessment of Ward 3 given its history by Chief Duggan uh, in addition to the water assessing water supply high hazard occupancy occupancy and special hazards and looking at the threat of the Ward 3 um, one of the additional threats I was told to look at was uh, the stormwater infrastructure 
and how it, it could not handle uh, heavy water during thunderstorms, impeding egress and access. Uh, recently, this has come uh, more apparent with multiple sinkholes that have started to form um, in some of the infrastructure down in Ward 3 in the drainage systems. Um, I met with the DPW, I did talk to them, they said they were going to do their best to get down into certain areas to repair the, the sinkholes, but uh, they said that they can't repair the lines themselves because it's just too expensive and they just don't have the funding. So, um, Again, I just retired, so Chief Duggan doesn't know I'm here. He'd shoot me if, he, if I didn't come before I tell him. I know this is probably kind of 11th inning, but you know, I figured in good faith I better come down and just say, you know, as the Deputy Fire Chief, the issue that we had was um, the water system, the drainage system just couldn't handle it. And we were in situations where we couldn't get the fire trucks. The ambulances especially because the fire trucks can get, take a little bit more water. They couldn't get this down a lot of the side streets. And I'm not sure how taking out of the footprint, um, you know, uh, makes that so that does not make it worse. Especially if you have compromised infrastructure where you have sinkhole forming. We have the pictures of them now. They said they're going to try and get to them, but you can only do so much with the funding that they have. The to-do list for the DPW is a long one. It's very long. I understand it. Uh, certain areas where we are in Ward 3, it's not right on the main road, but, um, you know, we have the documentation to show that the vehicles couldn't get down certain roads during high water. Um, and I, I've had neighbors say that if they are able to build, they'll take out of the footprint to the water system. I've talked to Doug McDonald about it. You can only do so much. So that's... Did you refresh my memory of where Eastern Avenue is? Eastern Ave is uh, where all the fires were in 2009. Uh, uh, William Russell Street, West. Pomeroy Terrace. Okay. The College Church, right down the end. Okay. It's, um, it's just an old part of the city with old pipes. And uh, it's just become water like this isn't a problem. It's when you get a thunderstorm. You get all that water at once into the city. And um, it just can't handle it. And uh, the trucks can't get through. And then we've had to do emergency egresses of numerous properties down there. Tell the people to get their vehicles out. Either that or they're going to be submerged. If, if I walk the avenue, would I be able to see the sinkhole? Oh, of course. Well, you'd walk down Eastern Avenue, you'd take a right down by the dike. Yeah. You'd have to actually, they're, they're kind of like grown in. The city said that they're going to try and get to fixing them. They found one last year uh, because they run the cameras through, mm -hmm. and uh, they found it. And when they were down there, then they started finding more sinkholes. But they... They just don't have the funding to replace the piping. So they're running the pigs through the pipes, and then they find that the right, pipe they is find broken, it. and that's what's causing the sinkhole. Uh, say, say that again. The pipe is broken, and that's what's causing the sinkhole? Right, right. You can actually stick the shovel down yeah. through the ground, and then when they get down there, then they go another 10 feet, and they yeah. find another one. And what they said was, well, we're going to try and fix where the break is, but... They just said we can't fix more pipes because we just don't have the money. And I understand. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. zoning changes that I haven't necessarily had to that, to, to 
force and that effect. It's impermeable. It's just a question of how fast it goes down, not making. Yeah, well, I think one of the problems is with most of the development is these small projects that don't trigger the storm water permit. Right. Mm -hmm. They Normally, still have to address their own on-site yeah. right. water, so, if they don't need a storm water permit. Okay, so theoretically it would improve the situation. Or at least not, theoretically, at least not make it worse. Yeah. And part of the issue, of course, is globally, if the home is there, an existing street is going to have less impact that they are, are forced to run towards 67 and build mm -hmm. new roads. Are we talking about the, the overall amendment now? Just that amendment or the overall recommendation for So we so what what I would recommend is so if, if ordinance can take this up on June tenth, they would only close it if they have your recommendation. So um, they could close it and then potentially move it to city council for the June twentieth meeting for first reading after the budget meeting. So do you need this? I don't know. Are we voting Owen, Owen's amendment or no. on the whole? No, you would have to no, the whole close. Thing? You would close the discussion, the public hearing on everything, and make a recommendation on everything, and you could incorporate the proposed amendment into your recommendation. And then I would recommend those other modifications about clarifying minimum lot dimensions and. Um, the garage being not, not living space. Jim, I know you did the last one, but it's only giving. Yeah, this is, this is a nice one to go out on. Well, there's two. So we're going we're gonna right. to motion to close. We have the motion to close the public hearing. Mm -hmm. right. And then we need the motion to recommend the city council propose zoning changes to URA, B, and C with the modifications to section 6A and then. Also, with the changes for the seven or more units in the URA and B, right. or B and C. Yeah. And then. And all right. The garage. Right. Be the right. I'll do the, well, I'll start with that. I move that we close the public hearing um, on the changes to this URA, B, and C. Well, exactly. Somebody wants to say something. Well, that's, you can, that's why I made the motion. You can <laughs> Second by John. All in favor? I, you've been leaving out the discussion. No. Yeah. No, we discussed. No, no, no. When, when you say. You mean discussion? No, no, discussion, discussion after. Then yes. you say, is, yes. is there any discussion? Yes. Okay. okay. You've been okay. skipping that part. Point noted. And the reason I'm saying that is. Come here. All right. I move that we recommend to the City Council propose zoning changes to URA, URB, and URC with modifications to Section 6A including the uh, addition for URC and URB for the special permit is being required for multifamily or townhouse projects containing seven more units and the change to accessory structures or is it garage? Garage. Uh, garages. garages. To clarify. Garages. And that's the last one. That's the last part. And, yeah, and just adding the minimum lot dimension Oh, and add the minimum, to, to, those are the wording changes. Yeah, yeah the minimum lot requirement changes. Second. Second. Discussion. Change the <laughs> <laughs> Well, the only thing I'm going to say is well, one point just before we go on. This <coughs> has been five years yeah. well, of the Sustainability Committee to the ZRC to the Planning Board to public meetings. Council back to the planning board. It has been a long time. I think a lot of thought and a lot of energy has gone into it. I mean, Carolyn's probably been at more meetings than just about anybody on this whole process. So I think, you know, after five years, it's nice to see it finally getting a chance to go see it. So, it's it's been good. interesting too. It hasn't, to me, it hasn't gone up and down and up and down. After that first wave of discussion review, it, it, the discussion narrowed quickly. Yeah. And then we've been in this thin little area that we've been talking about and talking about and tweaking, but it's been much more tweaking than wholesale changes to what was first uh, initially discussed. Well, I thought we were almost there when we were reviewing cables, but... Two years ago? No. <laughs> Up until we quit reviewing cables, but I really think we've come a long way now. Right. I mean, I think that's a, it's a much cleaner presentation. I'm not...
entirely comfortable with, with the zoning changes and they don't, I mean, they, not that I'm against change or anything, but they are, some of them are pretty significant changes. Um, but I will go along with the conclusion of superior skill and wisdom, Mr. Gilson and others. I'll come and go along with believe me. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. We're done discussing after five years. All in favor? There we go. Should be interesting to you the city council. Yeah. <laughs> Just a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have one other item, mm -hmm. and that's the trees for Leah Kia. So you all um, got in your email, I can refresh your memory if you need, um, but an issue that came up that I don't know how it got missed before, if the utility poles got changed, and I don't know if anybody got a chance to go out to King Street, but those utility lines are right <laughs> there where they're going to plant the trees, and I really would have to agree with the consult the engineer to say that those tall trees are not work. We don't want any more U-shaped trees. <laughs> so my recommendation would be to allow the selection of an alternative tree that's a much lower growing, but that might actually be healthy and not chopped apart. So moved. Second. As someone who has had, I don't know, pear, yeah. I, yeah, but I had a pear tree in front of my house that I'm not sure it was a power company, the cable company, who did it? Was like it? Well, it was a nice triangular tree, and they yeah. came and cut it, and they basically took a notch. But, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So it looked like an L. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that. I've got an evergreen that goes like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way my pear tree goes. Are we leaving it up to them, or have they recommended? No, I think it was a hawthorn. Yeah. That oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. So that's they right. had the species, and they would still plant two and a half caliper, but it's going to be a shorter plant. Right. And hawthorns are on the list. Yeah. Um, they are not because they're not they're, they're not, not full shade trees. But oh, okay. that's the point. Is there's, there's no nothing point. in there's there. There is no point. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's hawthorn trees all over the, the world, and I don't even know what a hawthorn looks like. Yeah. I should have poured. <laughs> There's some in Child's Park. There's some in Child's Park. Oh, okay. That narrows it down. Yeah. There's only another one. Figure. Bon voyage. No, I'd like to see. Yeah, I need a motion to approve six Hawthorne trees. So moved. Second. Second, Ann. I think of being sad that Stephen's leaving. I think we should be happy that we we're fortunate enough to serve with. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> He just wants a Christmas present. <laughs> well, it has been a lot of fun. I hope you're watching on TV. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> I really like it. I have channel 15 up on the. We can put it up in the back room and we'll work this way. So moved. In favor? Meeting adjourned.